Uh, hello. In this lesson, we are going to look at uh, shell theorems in electrostatics. Uh, these theorems are also there in uh, gravitation. Uh, similar theorems, two very powerful theorems. Uh, they are routinely used uh, in calculating electric field due to a system of charges. Uh, once you get the electric field, because electric field is uh, the force the system of charges applies on a unit positive charge, we can go ahead and calculate the forces that these system of charges applies uh, on any charge distribution or point charges. Okay, now what exactly are these uh, shell theorems? So here uh, we have a thin spherical shell. So this is a spherical shell. And a charge Q is uniformly distributed all over the surface. Okay, so here uh, a few things about the charge. So charge must be uniformly distributed. Okay, so charge Q is uniformly distributed. Uniformly distributed. Okay, so two things can happen here. When charge Q is uniformly distributed, uh, either this material is an insulator, okay, or uh, it is a conductor, okay. So if it is an insulator, the charge must be sprayed uniformly on the surface. If it is a conductor, you just place some charge uh, on the sphere. Uh, you might have heard about Gauss law and then how Gauss law actually explains that whatever charge that you place on a metallic sphere, whether it is hollow or a solid one, the charge ultimately gets distributed only on the outer surface. Okay, so it gets distributed uniformly. So in these cases, we can use the shell theorems. Okay, so they are used to calculate the electric field again force acting on a unit positive charge there are two theorems one at any point inside the shell okay so you take any point at any point inside the shell shell the electric field is zero okay electric field due to this charge is zero so that means it doesn't matter where you place uh, a point charge suppose you place a point charge at this location okay so q naught this point charge will experience zero force okay so you place any point charge anywhere those charges will not experience any force inside the shell okay so Shell theorem number two. So at any point outside the shell, at any point outside the shell, uh, suppose I take a point P here. If I am trying to calculate the electric field at this point from the center of the shell, if this distance is r, so the electric field is simply 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square. Okay, so the electric field direction because we have a positive charge distribution, it will be radially outwards. Okay, now just take a look at uh, the electric field expression that we have written here. Now, instead of the shell, if you had a positive point charge placed at point C, that point charge would have created the same electric field. So, here the second shell theorem is really saying this. Okay, it's so essentially saying that if you are trying to calculate electric field at points outside the shell you can just treat 
the charge distribution as a point charge, treat it as a point charge placed at its geometric center. Okay, so the charge, entire charge is treated as a point charge. as a point charge placed at its geometric center placed at its geometric center okay so let me repeat this again okay so at point c which is the geometric center of the shell if you had a point charge q it would create this electric field at this point P. And if you had this shell of charge, that would also create the same electric field. So essentially, we're just treating the entire charge as if it is a point charge placed at its geometric center. Okay, so these two theorems are very simple uh, to understand. Uh, of course, I mean, we have not uh, proved them. Uh, we can use Coulomb's law and methods of integration to prove them, but I think uh, we can easily remember them in order to apply in various situations.